So what's going on everyone? Here we go again uh, with another episode of Reading Passage Analysis. Today we're going to look at the Reading Passage Test 2 Cambridge 14. So we're just going to quickly go through the passage 1 uh, about the biography, The Life of Alexander Henderson. So as you can look at it, it's about the person and let's see who he is. Born in Scotland, Henderson emigrated to Canada in 1855, became a well-known landscape photographer. Okay, we're going to look at the life of a photographer, Alexander Henderson. As you might assume from the very first title, this should be the key whenever you're dealing with uh, reading questions. Now, we're just going to quickly go through the first paragraph. Henderson was born in Scotland, 1831, was son of a successful merchant, grandfather called Alexander, founded the family business, later became the first chairman of the National Bank of Scotland, Family had extensive land haulings in Scotland. Besides residence, Edinburgh, it owned press estate, 650 acres of acres of farmland about 35 miles southeast of the city. The family often stayed at Press Castle, a large mansion on the north edge of the property. Alexander spent much of his childhood in the area, playing on the beach near Eyemouth or fishing in the streams nearby. As we might have assumed, we can summarize the paragraph by saying, well, it is the childhood days of Alexander Henderson, his heritage, and his like, uh, overall family tree. Now, we can try answering some of the questions. So let's go to questions right now. So we're starting from the true, false, not given type of questions. I just read the first paragraph, and let me read... The first question, now. Henderson rarely visited the area around Press Estate when he was younger. So, key words, he rarely visited the area around Press Estate when he was younger. Now, let's uh, quickly highlight these words, like rarely. You can get the highlighter from here. No, no, this, maybe, yeah, but that's one really comfortable for me. Highlight rarely. Yeah, and... When he was younger. Okay, now let's quickly. We know that the first paragraph about his childhood, so we can easily find it. Let's go back. And right here, spent. Let's highlight this area as well. Alexander spent much of his childhood in the area. So, guys, as you might have seen, his family often stayed at Press Estate. Yeah, just point the mouse where I'm reading. Okay? He often stayed at Press castle large mansion on the north edge of the property and alexander spent much of his childhood in the area so now that means it's false let's go now it is false so you're just gonna keep uh choose the text option and track somewhere here false true false uh not giving questions might be a little tricky guys but trust me i uh, it can be easily dealt uh, when you really understand the whole context of what the text is about. Yeah, you just have to go and go and press escape. Go. No, no, go to the empty ones. Delete. This one. Delete. That's it. Now, let's look at the second question right now. Henderson pursued a business career because it was his family wanted. Okay, guys, so he started this business career because it was his family wanted. Now I got to ask myself a question. Did he really start his business because of his family or did he have a passion for it? Now, we're not sure about that. We're going to find it probably in later passages. One thing to remember, guys, like in true false not questions, in true false not given questions, the main thing is if you find uh, the answer for the first question somewhere at the top, then you have to go slowly down because you'll never have to go back up. The questions are given in order, in certain order. So now, with that being said, I'm going to find the answer for the second question just below the first one. Okay, let's read the second paragraph just real quick. The keywords, business career. So let's find it. He began a three-year apprenticeship to become an accountant, although he never liked it. Yeah? Okay. So you have to start like highlighting from this area, although, yeah, go until I re finish reading. He never liked the prospect of a business career, so he never liked it. He stayed with it to please his family. 
So yeah, go all the way to please his family stuff. As you can see, guys, like he did this business career stuff because he wanted to please his family. So it makes the uh, so that brings us to the question: We decide that it's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. True. When you press escape, like it, it prevents you from getting multiple texts. So. And, and now the third question. Henderson and Norton Notman were surprised by the result of their 1865 experiment. Okay, let's highlight 1865. Henderson and Notman. Surprised also. Also, the key word, surprised, if he was surprised or not. And when did it happen? It's 1865. So without much hesitation, guys, I'm going to go straight to these numbers right now. And Notman, I find Notman and this year. So that's going to help me decide. And I'm going to go from there. I'm not going to have to read out like everything. 1865 is what I need. And Notman is what I need. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to, either way, I'm going to have to read the next paragraph to make my job easier. Henderson learned photography in Montreal around 1857. I quickly took it up as a serious amateur. Not real important here. He became a personal friend and colleague of uh, photographer. No, okay. He became a friend. Two men made a photographic excursion to Niagara Falls. Okay, they they went to a, like Niagara Falls. They cooperated on experiments. They worked together with magnesium flares as a source of artificial light. They belonged to the same. Okay, now this is their experiment, and I gotta I gotta make sure if they were surprised or not. They belonged to the same societies and were among the founding member of the Arts Association of Montreal. Henderson acted as chairman. Association first meeting, which was held not in the studio. Okay, guys, like. I just really think that there's nothing if they were surprised or not. It's just about their experiment. So it makes the question not you. It's really important to like follow the follow the the event as well. It's not just about like finding and locating the answer, it's also about following the events. If you don't follow it, you're likely to make a mistake because you have no idea what's the whole point of it. But in that case, we just followed it. Okay, they were friends. They started the experiment at Niagara Falls. But we don't know if they were surprised because there is nothing about the result of the, the experiment. Now, question four. There were many similarities between Henderson's landscapes and Notman's landscape. Okay, there were similarities between his and Notman's landscape designs. So similarity is the key word. And as in the previous question, Henderson and Notman is the keyword. And as you, as I gotta tell you, I'm gonna find the next question just below. Let's go. So now Henderson learned photography, and okay, I'm gonna go to the. So let's highlight the, I mean the experiment kind of part, and nothing about the. Just the experiment. The two men made a photographic excursion to Niagara Falls until the whole part. That's it. In spite of their friendship, now let's highlight from here. In spite of their friendship, their styles of photography were quite different. Okay, we found the answer like real quick. So, in spite of their friendship, their styles were different. We were talking about the early styles. Let's see if there's anything about if their early styles match it. While Notman's landscape were noted for their bold realism, Henderson, for the first 20 years of his career, produced romantic images showing the strong influence of the British landscape tradition. So, yeah, we were right about that. It's not similar. So, it is false. Now, next question. The studio that Henderson opened in 1866 was close to his home. So now the key word is 1866. This studio that he opened, it was close to his home. So I got to see if it's close, it was not close, or if I don't know. Yeah, we're going to find it in the later passage. Somewhere here, maybe. In 1866, he gave up his business to open a photographic studio. Okay, so he opened a photographic studio in 1866. 
advertising himself as a portrait and a landscape designer. So this is the only information where I get to know about his studio, and there's nothing if he, his studio was close to his home or not. So that makes the answer not given. Let's do it. It is not given. Okay, question number six. Henderson gave up portraiture. Okay, see, so he gave up portraiture so that he could focus on taking photographs of scenery. Scenery means like landscape, as you guys know. So he gave up portraiture uh, in favor of landscape design. Okay, let's find it in the later, later part of the passage. So he gave up his business to open a photographic studio and advertising himself as a portrait and landscape. Okay, he did the two things now. But from about 1870, he dropped portraiture. Okay, he dropped it. That means he gave up portraiture. So he wanted to specialize in landscape design. Okay, let's highlight that real quick. Drop and specialize in landscape. Landscape means scenery. That is true. Now, question number seven. When, and uh, make sure you guys like pause the video and try to really understand because we're just going kind of a little fast. Might be a, and make sure you guys also have a paper, I mean, have also have a printed version of this particular passage handy so you could follow easily this way. Now, seven. When Henderson began work for the Intercolonial Railway, okay, when he began work for the Intercolonial Railway, the Montreal to Halifax line had been finished. Those are keywords. Inter Intercolonial Railway. Those are keywords. Keywords means like we're gonna be able to find the particular sentence where we where we can start searching for the answer. But what helps us find the answer is what helps us decide if it's true, false, or not is. When he began work, it had been finished. Now I gotta ask myself a question. Okay, when he began work, was it finished or not? That's what's gonna help me decide if it's true, false, or not. Let's go back up and find these two companies in our, in our Colonial Railway. I see it somewhere here, the same year, that same year, let's uh, start highlighting from you. That same year, while in the lower St. Lawrence River region, he took some photographs of the construction of the Intercolonial Railway. So he took photographs of this railway construction. This undertaking led in 1875 to a commission from railway to record the principal structures along the almost completed line. So as you can see, although he didn't really start working, the lane, it wasn't finished. Almost completed means like not finished. So which makes it false. So when he started taking photographs, it had been almost finished. Now, last question of true, false, not given. Henderson's last work as a photographer was with the Canadian Pacific Railway. So his last job before he retired was a phot photographer with this uh, Canadian Pacific Railway. Okay, this is the keyword. And what helps me decide is if it was his last work or if did he work somewhere else. Now that's what you get. What I gotta do. Okay, let's quickly follow it. Commission from other railways followed in 1876. He photographed reason on the Quebec Montreal Ottawa Occ Occidental Railway between uh, Montreal Ottawa and 1885. He went west along the Canadian Pacific Railway. Okay, now in 1885, as far as Roger Pass in British Columbia, so he went as far as these areas where he took photographs of the mountains and the progress of construction. Now I gotta decide if it's his last job or not. 
In 1892, Henderson accepted a full-time position with CPR. CPR is, one more time, Canadian Pacific Railway. Okay, he took the job as manager of the photographic department, which he was set up and administer. His duties included spending four months in the field each year. Summer, he made his second trip west, photographing extensively along the railway line as far as Victoria. He continued in this post until 1898. 97, when he retired completely from photography. Okay, he retired from photography completely in 1895, but until then, he worked in CPR, which is true. That is true. Okay, now, let's go, go down. 9 to 13. Questions 9 to 13. Choose one word only from the passage for each answer. Write your answers in the boxes 9 to 13 on your answer sheet. Alexander Henderson, early life. Okay, I know what to do. Was born in... So, we know about his life uh, from paragraph 1. He was born in Scotland in 1831 and his father was... Who was his father? Let's go back up to the first paragraph where his life was like mentioned. What he did. Now I gotta find the job of his father. Successful. Okay, he was the son of a merchant. Okay, so his father was a merchant. Let's go. Let's write it. Okay, next question. Account to immigrate to Canada and now, and now his career. So I know that he opened the studio, took photos of city life, preferred landscape photography. Okay, he dropped uh, like portraiture and uh, switched to landscape photography. People bought Henderson's photos. Why people? So I gotta ask myself a question: like, Why did people buy his photos? Because his photography photography took out considerable time. Okay, so people bought his photos because of the time limit. I mean time stuff. And something also was heavy. Let's go back up about, uh, no, 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 not this one. His studio, somewhere here. Yeah. Now I gotta find why people bought it. Even although his favorite subject was landscape, he usually composed his scenes around such human pursuits as farming the land, cutting ice on a river, sailing down a woodland stream. There was un un there was sufficient demand for these type of scenes and others. He took depicting the lumber trade, steamboats, waterfalls, and enabled him to make a living. There was little competing hobby or amateur photography before the late 1880s. Because of the time-consuming techniques involved and the weight of the equipment. Okay, so people loved it because of the time-consuming, because it took a lot of time. Also, it was heavy. So equipment was heavy. Let's uh, highlight this part. Equipment. The weight of the equipment. Mm -hmm. And equipment is the answer. So, the equipment. No, no, because we need only one answer, I guess. You see that the is already here. All you need is equipment. All you need is have, just to complete the sentence. T. That's it. Now, the photographs headers assault were either souvenirs or something. So, his photographs were either something or something. So. I know the first word is souvenirs, now I just have to find a follow-up word. So right here, uh, souvenir is a keyword. People wanted to buy photographs as souvenirs or as gifts. So souvenirs or gifts. Gifts is the answer. Now, traveling as a professional photographer, traveled widely in Quebec, Ontario in the 1870s and 1880s, took many tri trips along eastern rivers. He took a lot of trips in eastern rivers in something. Now I have to find his job in Quebec, which is in the later passage. As you can see, guys, it's not so difficult. You just have to follow a certain technique and you have to find the order of the passage and you're just going to have fun. 
So now I gotta find what does he, uh, what like what like how did he travel across the river? Documenting major cities, and he was especially fond of the wilderness and often traveled by canoe and other noted eastern rivers. Okay, in eastern rivers, he traveled by canoe, which is right here. Traveled by canoe. Let's highlight the whole part, and the canoe is our answer. Took many trips along Eastern River in a canoe. Okay, worked for CPR in 1885, photographed oh, and the railway at Rogers Pass. I, mean, I, I do know the answer already, but I just have to show you guys how I found it. Let's go back up. Because I I, I already remember it and like everything uh, when I was reading it. I was memorizing the whole part of it. So when he uh, when he was like with CPR, when he was yeah, in Indian, he went at west along the Canadian Pacific Railway as far as our past, where he photo took photographs of the mountains. Okay, he took photo of the mountains. Now you can delete it. Double, yeah. Double click. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is it. Okay, that's where we finish. Uh, and let's go back to the text and let's see how many parts of the passage were like touched for us to find the answer. And which part of the passage like was almost untouched. So first paragraph, like, we looked at it a lot, merchant, we found his father's job, and if he spent a lot of his time in the area, and we found uh, one answer in the second paragraph, and in the third one we found another, fourth one another, fifth one another, so the only paragraph that we didn't really touch was, like, this one, I exhibited his photograph in Montreal, London, so where, the, about the exhibition. So as you can see, guys, like everything is uh, given in order, especially true, false, not accurate question and sentence completion questions. So uh, I'm gonna be like posting the other part of the second uh, reading passage two and reading passage three later on. So guys, enjoy the video. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and ring the notification so you can get the daily updates or a weekly updates of my new posts and. That's, that's it for now, guys, and we're going to keep you posted with our new episodes, and I'm going to show you guys the best techniques to get 9 in IELTS reading. So, I'll see you guys. Bye.